Good morning. Today we'll start the sixth chapter, life processes. What is life processes? All living organisms perform certain life process activities like growth, digestion, respiration, circulation, excretion, etc. All these activities put together make the living organisms alive and they perform the job of maintaining of the body. Such a type of process is known as life processes. Now, to perform this life processes activities, our body requires some energy. Where do we get this energy from? We get the energy from the food what we eat. So, the ability of a body or the entire process of obtaining the energy from the food what we eat is called as nutrition. Our body requires nutrition in various forms. Now, why do we require nutrition? We require nutrition to our body to perform various life processes activities like growth and repair of cells, etc. Therefore, the raw materials which provide nutrition to our body are known as nutrients. Now, when we talk about nutrients, there are two major types of nutrients. It is macronutrients and another is micronutrients. The word itself specifies macro which our body requires large in quantity, micro which our body requires less in quantity. Now which are the macronutrients required by our body? Carbohydrates, fats, proteins and which are the micronutrients required by our body? minerals and vitamins. So these are the nutrients which our body utilizes to get nutrition which in turn gets energy to perform various life processes activities. In nutrition there are two different modes of nutrition. Which are those? Autotrophs and heterotrophs or we can say Autotropic form of nutrition, autotropic and heterotropic. We all have studied about autotropic and heterotropic in our lower classes. What are autotropic form of nutrition? Green plants, green plants and what comes under heterotropic form of nutrition? Animals. In simple terms, if I have to explain, autotropic form of nutrition, they prepare their own food. They do not depend on others for food. Except few plants, where we call them as insectivorous plants, but we are not discussing about any insectivorous plants here. Heterotropic form of nutrition, animals which depend directly or indirectly on plants for their food. Now let us discuss in detail about autotropic form of nutrition. Autotropic form of nutrition. We can say that organisms which carry out autotropic form of nutrition are called as autotrophs. Autotrophs. Now, what do we call autotrophs as? In simple terms, green plants. These green plants prepare their own food. So we have to define the process of autotropic nutrition that we can define as autotrophs under the presence or autotrophs can make use of inorganic material inorganic material like carbon dioxide, water and convert this into a organic matter like you can say what is an organic matter? Carbohydrates, Once again, autotrophs use inorganic matter.
water, say like carbon dioxide and water, and convert into a organic matter, say as carbohydrates, in presence of sunlight and chlorophyll, and the whole process is known as photosynthesis. Now, before we discuss much about this, let us first understand what is inorganic matter and what is organic matter. Inorganic matter is a matter which is derived from non-living sources. What are non-living sources? Carbon dioxide, water, air, mineral, etc. What is organic matter? Sources which are derived from the living sources. What are living sources now? Plants and animals. So here, autotrophs, that is green plants, convert inorganic matter, that is carbon dioxide and water, to organic matter, that is into carbohydrates, in presence of sunlight and chlorophyll. This process is known as photosynthesis. We all have been studying photosynthesis from our lower classes, but here we go a bit in detail about photosynthesis. What is the equation of photosynthesis? During photosynthesis, carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide combines with water in presence of sunlight, sunlight and chlorophyll. I will write the equation here since it is not transformation there. Carbon dioxide water in presence of sunlight and chlorophyll converts that to a glucose and gives out oxygen and water. So, if I have to write this in the equation form, I will be writing it in the form of 6 CO2 plus 12 H2O in presence of sunlight and chlorophyll which will give me glucose. Glucose I will write it as C6 H12O6 plus oxygen and water. Now, why have I written here 6 CO2, 12 what, 12 uh, H2O, then the equation here. This is something called as chemical equation and balancing of a chemical equation. We will be studying what is balancing of a chemical equation in our chemistry classes. The first chapter in your science, chemical equations and reactions. Till now, let us only understand this is an equation of photosynthesis. Inorganic material, carbon dioxide water, presence of sunlight chlorophyll, converts that to an organic material with gives out oxygen and water. Now, there are some raw materials which is required in photosynthesis. Now, what are the raw materials? So, the raw materials required in photosynthesis are carbon dioxide, water, what are we have used here? Sunlight, chlorophyll, okay, let us understand the each role here. Carbon dioxide is inorganic material, water is inorganic material, sunlight is again in inorganic. Chlorophyll. Now what is the role of chlorophyll here? Chlorophyll is, chlorophyll in the plants or chlorophyll in the leaves absorbs the sunlight. So the raw materials which are there in the photosynthesis process. Now what is the main site of photosynthesis? Whole green plant is the main site? No. Green leaves are the main site of photosynthesis. The main events which will occur in the photosynthesis process. Let us study that. The main events which occur in the photosynthesis are first event which will happen here is absorption of light energy. I just write absorption. The second event which will happen in photosynthesis is conversion. Let us see what will convert into what. And the third thing which will happen in photosynthesis is reduction. Reduction is reducing. Okay. What is absorption here? Absorption of light energy by chlorophyll. The chlorophyll which is present.
present in the plant go, does the process of absorption of the sunlight. Next is conversion. What converts? Light energy is converted into chemical energy. Reduction. What is reduced? Carbon dioxide is reduced to carbohydrates. So, these are the main events of photosynthesis. Now, during the photosynthesis, the stomata, which are the tiny pores on the leaf, leaves have, the outer layer of the leaves have tiny pores on them. What is the role of the tiny pores? These tiny pores help in the exchange of gases as well as help in the transpiration. Now, what is exchange of gases? Exchange of gases is nothing but carbon dioxide to oxygen. So, stomata helps in the exchange of gases and also helps in transpiration. What is transpiration? Transpiration is exhalation of excess of water from the plants. So, this is about autotrophic form of nutrition. Now, let us study in detail about the next part, heterotrophic form of nutrition. Once the amoeba's body comes in contact 
contact with the food particle. Now, this is the amoeba and this is the food particle. Now, can you see something here? A finger like projection? Yes. So, what happens when amoeba's body comes in contact with the food particle? It will extend the finger like projection towards the food particle. So, this finger like projection is called as pseudopodia. What is pseudopodia? Pseudo is fawns and podia is feet. That means something which is projecting as a false feet. Amoeba extends like a finger like projection. If this is a food particle, this is amoeba, this is food particle. When amoeba comes to know that this is a food particle, it will slowly extend like a finger like projection. This finger like projection is known as pseudopodia. This food particle enters inside the amoeba, what we can see here. Then the food is further digested, made use, assimilated to the various parts for various growth etc. And then suddenly a part of amoeba, anywhere, any part of amoeba gets ruptured and the waste is expelled out of amoeba's body. So this is the whole intake process of food or you can say the intake of food by amoeba, a unicellular organism utilizes different processes for nutrition. The first process here is ingestion, digestion, absorption, assimilation and addition. What is ingestion? Intake of food is known as ingestion. Breaking down of the complex food molecules to a simple molecules is called as digestion. Movement of digested food in our body is called as absorption. Utilization of this food to the various parts of our body for the requirement of various activities is known as assimilation. Removal of waste particles from our body is called as addition. So this is all about the nutrition process in human beings. So, now in today's class, we have studied in basic about introduction, what is life process, so what are the different processes, how the processes are carried out, nutrition, what are the nutrients, modes of nutrition, under modes of nutrition we have studied about autotrophs and heterotrophs, under autotrophs, autotropic form of nutrition and that we studied about photosynthesis, raw materials required for photosynthesis, site of photosynthesis and events occur during photosynthesis what is stomata, stomatal pores. Then we studied about heterotropic form of nutrition animals, three types of heterotropic form of nutrition with examples. Under the first one, holozoic form of nutrition, we studied nutrition in a unicellular organism that is single celled organism amoeba and how the nutrition process takes place. So, we will end up the class with this. In next class, we will be studying about nutrition in human beings. On today's class, if you have any doubts, please call on the same day of the video session.